Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a potential resolution to a very intriguing mystery. A mystery of these unusual stars that we often refer to as BE stars. Although intriguingly, in this case, nobody even knew it was a mystery up until recently because of the observations from the Gaia telescope. But I guess to be even more specific, here the researchers potentially discovered why these stars have these unusual features, including what seems to be a ring-like formation similar to Saturn, and why they produce very specific types of emissions. And so let's discuss this in more detail, starting with the idea of what exactly is going on here. And here we have to start with the stellar classification. Most stars today can be classified as one of these seven types, M being the smallest, the red dwarfs, O being the largest, representing the giant blue stars. In case you're wondering, our Sun is the G type, representing about 7.6% of all stars in the galaxy. And though all of these types have a lot of subclassifications, it's actually the B type that seems to have one specific classification that's somewhat difficult to explain. And so here B type stars, such as for example Regulus that you see right here, represent relatively bright main sequence stars, 2 to maybe 7 solar masses in mass, with a surface temperature of 10,000 to 30,000 Kelvin. They only represent about 0.13% of stars in the galaxy, but they're also really bright and are usually relatively easy to see. But it just so happens that some of these B stars have an unusual emission of hydrogen referred to as the Balmer emission line. But even stranger than that, they all seem to be non-supergiant, even though they're all extremely bright and extremely hot. And so because of these emissions, today they're simply referred to as BE stars. E stands for emissions. And the first such star confirmed is known as Gamma Cassiopeia. You see it right here. As you can see, it's so bright that it basically outshines everything else. And today it's believed that many of these extra emissions very likely come from one simple fact. These stars seem to rotate so fast that they basically turn into an egg shape. And as a result of this, they essentially seem to form a kind of a detached shell of gas right in the equator region of this star. It would basically resemble something like this, and in some sense represents the material that potentially got ejected from the surface because of the spin of the star. And though this doesn't apply to all B stars, it does seem to be pretty common. Or basically this unusual ring seems to be extremely common and is very likely responsible for many of these emissions. But because of this very fast rotation, they also produce extremely strong stellar winds and also lose a lot of stellar mass compared to any other similar star. Once again, all of this becomes obvious when you look at this star right here, that has a lot of material around it. And though the idea of the fast rotation might explain why exactly these stars become like this, maybe there was another explanation, and maybe all of this could be discovered by doing a statistical analysis. And no better way to do this than use all of the data from the Gaia telescope that's been observing the night skies for the past few years. But here the scientists behind the recent paper decided to only focus on B and B stars, or basically different subclassifications of B stars. And more specifically, they wanted to find out how many of them are binary and how many might appear single. Based on various studies from, for example, R136 cluster, these really large, really massive stars like B and O type, we know that none of them seem to ever form alone. They always come as at least a binary, usually as a multiple star system, with some eventually escaping and becoming solo, but in the beginning they always have a partner, and most remain as a binary at least. But there is something unusual that was discovered recently when looking at B and BE types and comparing their orbits. For some reason, BE stars had a much lower chance of having a companion compared to B stars, which actually made no sense because scientists expected them to have more. In other words, most of BE stars should be binary, whereas it turns out that most weren't. Okay, cool, cool, but what's the big deal here? Well, the bigger deal came from the discovery that when you look at stars with much higher orbital separation, or basically stars that take much longer to orbit around one another, in this case the rate of companions was extremely similar for both B and B stars. But also some of the B stars appeared a little bit different. And to the scientists behind the study, this didn't really make sense at first, until they realized that, okay, maybe what actually happens here is basically vampirism. Or in other words, many of these stars potentially start not as binary but as triple star systems, with two stars much closer together at first and one star on the outskirts. And as it usually happens with close partners, one of them starts feeding off the other. And this probably happens for quite some time, 
very likely transferring a huge amount of mass, but also transferring a lot of angular momentum. Which in essence does two things. First, it accelerates the star, making it spin really, really, really fast. But second, it makes it acquire the disk. The unusual ring-like formation that most likely came from the partner star and would directly explain why we see these unusual hydrogen lines not seen from other stars as well, because we're basically looking at the leftovers from an ancient star that used to be here. And it still is most likely here, but just became extremely small and barely detectable and have lost the majority of their mass. They might even become unusual planets, only leaving the core behind. And one of the best examples presented here is the star that was discussed previously because the scientists at first believed that we discovered the closest black hole to planet Earth. The star system HR6819. Here, because of very unusual observations, at first it was thought to be two stars orbiting a black hole. But it turns out that it was actually an extremely fast-spinning star that was producing these very unusual observations. That fast-spinning star was a BE star and was much, much smaller and possessed a disk. And so here, a black hole was no longer necessary to explain the observations, making this a somewhat usual BE-type system. But now this new research suggests that this is not a binary system, but most likely a triple system. And so this unusual motion of the disk that was discovered here that took approximately 40 days and tricked everyone believing it was a black hole might be better explained by some kind of a third star, a leftover star, that created the disk and turned the star into a BE star. Interestingly, the star is not even that old, approximately 50 million years old, but it's already rotating really fast. Projected rotational velocity here is approximately 50 kilometers per second. With the main discovery being that these unusual disks that form around certain types of stars probably did not come from themselves, but very likely were the result of a stellar vampirism, or basically a mass transfer that turns a previously normal B-type star into a more extreme version with rapid rotation and somewhat unusual emissions. Which I guess also highlights how extremely common this process is, basically a mass transfer process, and how extremely common the disks are as well. They actually seem to form around everything. Anything from asteroids, to obviously planets, to stars, black holes, neutron stars, even white wars. And so trying to learn the evolution of all of this and understand the processes in more detail will help us figure out how stars evolve, how the solar system formed, with the paper here also highlighting that we might need to start focusing on triple star systems a little bit more. They might be actually a lot more important than we ever thought. But at least for now, that's all I wanted to mention. An interesting study of these very strange pancake stars with very unusual disks and a potential resolution slash solution to how they get them and what happens here at the end. There might be other discoveries in some of the future studies, but at least for now, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, Support the channel on Patreon by joining general membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.